Askat Adil has spent most of his life right here in Australia. He has a driver's licence, a Medicare card and pays his taxes. But according to the Immigration Department, he doesn't exist. 40-year-old Askat Adil is a man without an identity and desperate to be recognised. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're an Aussie. Yes. He lives in Western Sydney, went to school in Australia, university educated, has a good job, paid his taxes, married here, has a family, a model citizen. But he doesn't exist to the immigration department. So for the last 20, 25 years now, just trying to figure out how to get my ID in order has been, I, I don't even know the word. Quite frankly, it's a bloody Beyond. nightmare. <laughs> exactly, yes. As cat, a dill. It's simple to say, isn't it? <laughs> simple to spell. But the federal government says his name is, well, something he can't even say. How do you pronounce that? That's uh, A-C-H-T, I'm not sure. It's A-C-H-T, I think that's that's the way it's been. And what about the surname? Say der ding. I could see why you changed yeah. your name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You try it. His family was originally from Uzbekistan and fled communist oppression to settle in nearby Xinjiang in China. That's where the Uyghur people are and oppression started again. So they resettled in Australia as refugees, bringing their Uyghur language with them. So we came here under the white Russian visa scheme. Dad managed to get his citizenship all the other relatives who came here too. In time, he met his wife, Ramilla. She's a citizen. And of course, so too, his newborn son. But not Azkat. <laughs> and it's devastated Sididran, his father. So my, my dad is very frustrated. He's saying, I can't, I can't believe that we've been here since 1985. The whole family has got the necessary government ID, passport, citizenship, to to leave Australia, visit, go, enjoy, yet I'm still struggling. He goes, I'm so internally frustrated because I don't know how to help him, but at the same time, I don't know what to do. Other than coming to Australia, I've never been overseas. Ascat, do you want to travel overseas and why? I still have a mum overseas. I've never seen her. I don't know her. I haven't spoken to her. I don't even know at the moment if she's alive. So I can't go and find her without a passport. Ascat's mum and dad separated when he was a baby. He travelled here on his father's passport and the government in China gave him his local name, which he's never been called. That passport is now expired and without a citizenship certificate like dad's, he can't get an Aussie passport. It all hinges on me not having a birth certificate because I don't have that one government ID where I was born, my name. I can't change my name. I can't get proof of citizenship here. I can't get a passport. So the merry-go-round is I go to change my name and they want birth certificate. I can't get the birth certificate because they want proof of citizenship. I can't get the passport because they need all of the above. Back in 2007, he did get one letter from the immigration people. I was able to do half of what I wanted to do, which was to get a documentation or a letter with my name stating that I was a citizen at that time. But they wouldn't actually give me a citizenship certificate because I still needed to provide the proof. Proof being that I didn't have a birth certificate. But the Australian bureaucrats did have a suggestion for him to resolve the matter. So they're wanting me to produce either for myself to go overseas, back to where I was born, and produce a birth certificate. How am I gonna possibly do that? How would I leave the country without a passport? It's madness. The madness continues. You see, other government departments recognise as Adil as someone who does exist. So you had a bank account as a kid. I had a bank account, and there's me, as Adil. The bank what? didn't mind calling you that? No. Nope. Son's birth certificate has as Adil as the father. His marriage certificate, as Adil. Driver's licence, as Adil. Medicare, 
Así que era de This is really ridiculous. His wife Ramilla sums it up perfectly. I don't know at the beginning. He I think he might feel a little bit shameful or something, but he didn't tell me exactly what's happening, what's going on. He never seen my parents because we don't have a passport. Do you feel trapped in the system? I feel like this is a, a very large prison and I just can't leave and explore what everyone, all my peers explore, you know, the world. Uh, different countries, different cultures. And of course, to try and find mum. Just help us, please. Yeah, it's been too long. Like, this has been all his life been here. Just help us. It really shouldn't be this hard, should it? No, it shouldn't. Well, Brady is here now with some good news. Yes, we do have some good news, Trace. You know, sometimes people just get lost in the system, don't they? You know, the forms didn't help ASCAT's problem, the people on the other end of the phone or those at the reception desk. So we contacted the officer, Office of the Minister for Immigration and Citizenship, Alex Hawke. They looked at it, directed it to the department, and a case manager was assigned they could see the issues the system couldn't recognise and they helped him sort it out. He's now been told in a week or two he should have an Australian citizenship certificate in his hand and with that he can finally apply for a passport. To the Minister's office, thank you very much. You know, sometimes, Trace, you can get lost in the bureaucracy, can't you? But I love a good result. Indeed. Thanks, Brady. Thank you.